Nashville Daily Podcast. I'm your co-host, Stuart Deming, and today's episode is brought to you by coffee. If you're looking for some great coffee, you need to check out our sponsor, Blessed Day Coffee. You can use the code EXPLORE20, that's XPLR20, at his website, blessedaycoffee.com. Uh, we have a few different collaborative roasts with him, so head over to Blessed Day Coffee to get your coffee. Today, we're talking about some updates with the Nashville International Airport and some of the expected dates of release for the new hotel, Concourse D, and a few things. We're also talking about how Southwest Airlines just announced that they're going to be building a new hub here in the city of Nashville. And we have a small little document from the Chamber of Commerce talking about the economic development of the area from 2021 to 2022. So, a lot to talk to, talk about. Aaron, we're going to get into the Southwest article first. And this was announced, I believe, August 14th. So, earlier this week, it was announced on Monday. Governor Bill Lee did a reel on this, talking about uh, how excited they are for the expansion of uh, uh, Southwest Airlines building another crew base hub here in Nashville. Yeah, so this is... it's. Less of a building, more of it's more more of an expansion. Yeah, because um, they already have a small they, presence here. They have a small. Uh, you have to have a small crew hub in in Nashville in every almost every city yeah. that you're in, uh, every major city that you're in. Um, and what is a crew base? Well, from this reading, what I gathered is a crew base is essentially you're looking at how many additional pilots, uh, how many additional flight attendants and stuff are in a city at a given time. Um, And so making sure that there are um, accommodations for those. And I don't, I don't think that necessarily means specific hotels. Maybe it does. It doesn't really say too much in here, but it could mean uh, office lease. It could mean additional space lease. So I'm not exactly sure what all goes into that, but what I've heard of a lot of these things is like, especially so like, I just want to show this real quick. So, uh, in the second quarter of 2024, Nashville will become the 12th crew base in uh, the Southwest system and approximately 150 to 250 pilots, growing to 500 to 600 pilots are going to be basically stationed here. Yeah, they're starting that in 2024. I don't know when they're going to get to the five to 600. Yeah, probably um, over, over time. But, but, what, but what typically but what that's happens... A, uh, at least starting with 150 to 200 pilots, like, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, so it's awesome. Uh, growing to five to 600 pilots. That's great. Wow. That's, but that's the, wild. The, so typically what happens is maybe the corporation or all of the pilots will go in on a place together, and they're, they're only staying there for a, maybe a couple days at a time. Right. So it, it's flipping. So uh, there's also going to be an estimated 500 to 700 flight attendants based in the new crew location beginning in 2024 with a continued growth plan. Uh, let's see. Yep. This is the coolest Southwest plane. It has the Tennessee state flag on it. That is very, very cool. Yeah. Also, with the Rocky Mountains in the background. Yeah, with the Rocky Mountains <laughs> in the background. Uh, they must be flying to Colorado. Yeah. Um, let's see. Future of Nashville. Uh, Future of Nashville Southwest continues to invest in future projects at BNA. Earlier this year, BNA unveiled a renovated and reimagined Grand Lobby, which we've covered extensively here on this podcast. The carrier is in the process of relocating its ticket counters to provide a better customer experience for those departing BNA. I'm going to find that out later this week about how they've changed things. (laughs) Uh, Additionally, Southwest continues its efforts to reinforce airport infrastructure, increase available equipment, and strengthen overall winter preparedness at BNA. Also in other... Hopefully they uh, uh, they don't have the debacle that they had last winter. Yeah. Other Southwest, or I guess, no, just general national airport news, um, the flight space or the the controlled airspace class that Nashville or BNA is under uh, is a, or or was as of two weeks ago, class C airspace. This is only going to matter to like five people that that are are listening to this. Um, Basically, it means how many and how far you have to be and how high you have to be or how low you have to be if you're in the air to check in with the airport, if you are either uh, flying in, um, for example, a helicopter, while you're in that airspace would have to check in before you enter into that specific airspace. You have to get permission to fly into that airspace. So they just enlarged 
that radius of, of how far you have to be outside of BNA to check in before you can fly in that airspace at certain altitudes. And so we went from a Class C to the only super Class C that is in the United States. Because the Class B were not big enough of a demand yet. We, we, B. we have the demand. We don't have the infrastructure. Okay. So we have the passenger capacity, just not the infrastructure yet. Okay. So once we have that infrastructure, we will be a Class B airspace, which would actually expand that radius that territory. even more. So that radius goes all the way to... Um, as far as the immediate radius of like the the tightest you can be in that there's two circles for for this tightest you can be goes all the way to Vanderbilt, which is a huge expansion because it did not even hit um, it 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 hit right where right before the stadium yeah because be, you before. could you could uh, you could fly at Fort Nagley and be okay correct yes so, so now that's probably going to be an issue. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So they ex expanded that immediate territory, and then the larger expansion goes past John C. Toon. Okay. Uh, of that. So now John C. Toon did not have to check in with BNA before they took off. Now they do. Interesting. Yep. Super interesting. Uh, speaking of passengers, the airport officials, this is from the Tennessean, airport officials expect to host at least 22 million passengers this year, up 27% since 2019, and they will develop a new master plan earlier than expected to revise their growth expect expectations, which has been consistently below reality. Uh, this is coming from the CEO. Uh, will be bigger than the master plan forecasted uh, for us through 2037 because we're 13 years ahead of projection. 13? <laughs> oh my um, gosh. Okay, current construction <laughs> uh, that, that is insane. Uh, good for them. Good for good for you, BNA, for oh, being man. ahead of the curve, for taking care of your infrastructure and and doing things right. Uh, current construction <laughs> plans make space private for private dollars. Big, private dollars. That's exactly what it is. Current construction plans make space up for uh, for up to 35 million annual passengers. That's a massive amount of people. Well, it, it is, but compared to what we have now, we're sitting at 31, 32 ish. So right, right now, right now this year, we're estimating at 22. At 22. least, at okay. least 22. Okay, 22. so we're probably going to hit like 22. So five. we're bumping up another like 10 million percent on that. That's yeah. wild. That's insane. This month, the Metro Nashville Airport Authority will consider the best site to build a second terminal to serve more than 35 million people by 2030. Jeez. So we are to that point, guys, where like Philadelphia and Buffalo, where you have multiple terminals. Yep. Philadelphia has like six or five. Jeez. And you have to take buses to get to them. Yep. And that's that's one thing that is happening here of concourse. Yeah. Uh, that's the new concourse. The, the new uh, remote or I, don't, I can't remember what they're calling it. That opens in September or October, I believe. Yep. So we'll talk yeah. about the date here in a second. And um, I think the international, I think international is opening first. I think the remote one's opening after that, I believe so. Okay. So a new concessions program, uh, which is which has party foul and 400 degrees and all of these different local Nashville restaurants. Yeah. In, uh, will bring the total shops, restaurants, and services to about 100 by the end of the year. Wow. So that's going to be 100 different local shops inside of the airport, which is fantastic. Um, okay, so these are projects that have been recently completed. So you have the Grand Lobby, which we've talked about. Uh, you have the uh, unveiled a BNA monu a monument sign at the entrance of Interstate 40. So yep. it's that 45-foot or 40-foot sign, that yep. brand new one. Bought a $1 million aircraft rescue and fire fighting vehicle for BNA uh, and two $1 million Air, airfield snow removal sweepers. Nice. Okay, so coming this year, September 27th, opening of the new international arrivals facility yep. and a mall with 15 new concessions. Yep, I believe that's right after you, right after you enter. Yep, which is going to be great right there to the right. Yep. October 21st, this is all estimated. This can change. Opening of the new satellite concourse with seven concessions. Satellite concourse, yep. Uh, buses will transport passengers from the terminal. So now we're getting into, we're, we're, we're becoming like airports like Philadelphia or Atlanta. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> December 31st. Not Atlanta, but we're, we'll one day. One day. Uh, December 31st, opening first on-terminal hotel above a third new parking garage. So okay. that's opening potentially December 31st. When yeah. finished, the three parking garages uh, facing the airport will, uh, will together accommodate 7,500 vehicles. 
Okay. They are making money hand over fist. Oh, That's yeah. how they're paying for everything. <laughs> the parking. Is the parking. <laughs> uh, December 31st. This one is exciting. Hopefully this actually works. Completion of Interstate 40 exit road widening, widening from one to two lanes. Additional gates will also bring a total of the 69 gates. Okay. Plans for the next five years. Okay, uh, $287 million for Concourse D, $855 million for Concourse A expansion, and there's a few other things in the show notes. All right, speaking of, sir, you mentioned 2030. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, they have their, I'm going to make sure I get it's it right. Partnership 2030. Partnership 2030. So we're, we're soon we're going to start seeing 2035 projections start to pop up because they, do, it's they gonna typically be, do every 10 years yeah for the project so they did project yeah. 20 and project 2010 yeah. so we're gonna see we're gonna see probably 35 and 40 those planning things happening soon which is wild yeah, yeah. um but they they put out a little like one sheet um and telling, report. telling yeah. about like some of the progress on of that stuff they've essentially completed the first year of their partnership 2030 planning, fundraising, all of that stuff. Um, so a, a little bit of the results um, with that, they had a lot of probably new partner investment, especially since they broke ties with the city officially financially. Um, they uh, raised $25 million for partnership 2030 in the past year. Um, and so that helps them implement their strategies around job creation, education, talent development, uh, quality of, of place and livability. Um, so that's uh, there, there's a lot of stuff on there if you want to chime in, anything else. But that, that yeah, was kind so of the, 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 the top of the report right there. Uh, so we're just going to focus in on the economic development and then, uh, yeah, everything else you could read in the show notes if you wanted to click on it. So uh, some of the highlights, this is from the economic development. for So this is 2021 to 2022. A top 10 U.S. metro for job growth 10 years in a row. Number six, top city for job seekers in 2022, according to Money Geek. Number four, uh, Metro for economic strength uh, in 2022, according to Polycom. Uh, number one, Metro for the most economic growth in 2021. So that's some highlights for the last year and a half. Yeah. Uh, so as of last year, these are some of the job announcements. 38 total announcements, 16 from expansion, 22 companies relocated here. That's wow. great. Uh, 16,545 new jobs. Uh, so 1,430 from expansions, 15,115 from relocations. That's great. So capital investment into this uh, Middle Tennessee market, $2.96 billion. Jeez. 2.38 of that billion was from re relocations. This really, really makes you think, like, Everybody who, if, if you go to our page on explore.nashville, talked about this yesterday. Um, many people who are complaining about the new Nashville um, when we talk about developments on there. It makes you wonder, like, it, I, does that person stop and think, would I have this job if Nashville wasn't the new Nashville? Oh, that's so it's true. It's a great question to ask. That's so true. Uh, so this was uh, over 5 million square feet either purchased or leased uh, in the last year. So that, that's awesome. So... Uh, if you guys want to see more of this in the show notes, head over to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. There you go. All right. Uh, let us know what you think. B&A is going to be the place of focus. If you want to know in the projections of, like, when will Nashville stop being at its peak? It's not. You, you'll see the airport stop expanding and yep. moving yep. until we're as big as Atlanta. <laughs> Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> the, the thing about us is our airport's a lot closer than Atlanta's to the downtown. That's very true. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.